going to start working with building uh, exponential equations and some of you need some review with uh, lines, equations of lines, so I decided this would be a good activity to do and not have you just skip it in this packet. So they gave us, what they've done is, for this example, they told us that um, I've got these two points, uh, they gave me that point there, the 4, 6, and there's that graph of 4, 6, and then there's another point on the line, they're telling us it's the y-intercept, which is 0, 3. And they want us to do two things with this. First off, they want us to, to draw, to come up with an equation of a line that passes through those points. Then they also want us to come up with the equation of our exponential model. And some work you've done in the past, I know, I know that you know that exponential models are a curve that looks like that. So, obviously, you know, for just two points, probably the line's the best way to go. Unless they tell us this does these are two points that are on an exponential model. And we'll do some more, more work with that later on. Um, so that's what we're going to do with this. We're going to find a line. We're going to find build an exponential model. And uh, then we're going to use it to make a prediction. So how about the line work here that Dr. Er, or Stu Schwartz talks about? So we've got two points here. We've got a 0, 3. And we've got a 4, 6. And what's nice about this problem they gave us, here's the y-intercept. That's b. So that's that's easy. Now we get to find the slope. And so because some of you are a little rusty with this still, remember x2, uh, x, x1, y1, x2, y2, and slope is the rise or the difference in the y's divided by the differences in the x's. So... 6 minus 3 over 4 minus 0 gives me a slope of 3 over 4. And then because this they told us the y-intercept, I don't have to do anything fancy. I can just write uh, y equals 3 fourths x plus 3. And there's my line. And that's my line work. So when I'm writing an expect exponential model, what you have is... Well, I mean, this note, this notes, the set of notes is using C for that initial model. For, and C is for a constant right here. That's why they, he's using C. We could use A. Uh, the Lipman book uses A. Um, so it, do, it doesn't really matter. And actually, this is using, a, using E also. I just noticed that. So I'm going to walk you through both of them, both, both ways. Uh, so because, um, well, let's see. So I have C E to the A X. Some other books talk about this as Y equals A E to the K X. And either works. It doesn't matter what you use. Um, I'm just saying that because I'm probably going to switch back and forth. So I've got some things going on here. I know when X equals 0, Y equals 3. So 3 equals C, well, A times 0 is 0, E to the 0 is 1. So that's telling me C is 3, and that initial value, or the y-intercept, if you want to think about it. So if you know the y-intercept, you really can just jump to stick in whatever the y-intercept is in front, of the, in front of the base. Whether you're going to use, uh, whether, whether you're going to use this form, whether you're going to use A, B to the X, where you don't use E for the base, you're using another base. Um, so we would so we would write three here also. So that part's easy. So now we need to have the a. Remember, e is that number two point seven one whatever that transcendental number, and y is a variable and x is a variable. But our a is a constant we have to find, and we haven't used this point four six. So what we can do with this at this point in the in the model is uh, we can say six equals 3 times e to the a times 4, because that's what x is. So that leaves me 6 equals 3e to the 4a. Now I'm solving this exponential equation, so I'm going to divide by 3. That leaves me 2 equals e to the 4a. Now, so I've got an exponential equation i got to solve. I uh, could rewrite it with a... With a uh, logarithm, actually, why don't we rewrite it with a logarithm? We can say the log base e 
of 2 has to equal the exponent of 4a. Well, uh, log base c is the same as ln. And then I can grab my calculator if I want. I can find the log, the ln of 2. I'm getting that that is 0.693147. That's probably enough decimal places. Equals 4a. So then I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by 4. And that's telling me the exponent that the the constant term that's getting multiple in the exponent is 0 0.173. I'm going to go through four decimal places. So because uh, David Lippman in our textbook uses a slightly different model to build, uh, I mean, instead of using e, he uses a. I'm going to show you how to do that too. Even though to do this work here in Stu Schwartz packet. We don't need to, but I want you to see it anyways. It wouldn't hurt you to do both. In fact, maybe I'll have you do both. So the model he suggests we use is a times b to the x, where we aren't using a, the natural base for the base. We're going to use some other number. So it's the same deal. There's If you substitute in 3 and 0 for x and uh, y and x, you're still going to get that the a number, that, that initial value, is 3. Then if we substitute in 4 and 6, 6 equals 3 times b to the 4th. Divide both sides by 3. That's going to give you 2 equals b to the 4th. So now we're going to ask ourselves, uh, how do we solve that for b? Well, I'm going to take the 4th root of both sides of this equation. So that tells me b equals the 4th root of 2. And I could write it as that radical. I can also raise 2 to the 0.25 power on my calculator. That's telling me the base is 1.1892 if I want to round. So that would give me an equation of y equals 3 times 1.892 a I'm missing a 1 to the x power. Now those equations look different but they're equivalent. Okay, so it doesn't really matter which way you do it. I mean, when you go out to my open math, they'll be looking for one or the other. Okay, so now the last thing that I haven't done is we want to substitute in x equals 8 into our linear model and into our exponential model, and it won't matter what model you use. Now, if you look at the handout, Sue Schwartz has you use a calculator, <clears throat> and I'd like, you to, I'd like you to be able to do that. Really, all we're doing is we're substituting in 8 for x and 8 for x, either, whichever equation you use. Okay, so I'm going to take a couple screenshots also that will help show, help show you the same thing what he did on that packet. So I've got a lot on the screen. So what I did is I went to the calculator, I pressed y equals, I typed in my linear equation, I typed in that exponential equation that I got with e as a base, and here's the other equation that I typed in, and then I wanted to be able to see see my graphs, and especially because they wanted me to to predict for eight y, x equals eight. So I th I knew I I set my uh, I wanted to see the y axis, so I set x min to negative one, even though I don't need any negative numbers. And I said my y max. Well, I want to go beyond what I'm predicting, so I can see that. And then I got I had to think about it. I had to go below the y axis because or x axis. I knew I had to. I wanted to see see that in the mix. And then I had to think about what I would be getting for my y max to set my top y number. So I knew if I substitute 8 in here, that would be uh, 6 plus 9 and plus 3 is 9. And then these other ones would be probably more than that, I thought. So I guessed 15. Took a couple of tweaks. So that's what I set for my window. Then I press graph. And this is what I saw. And then I press the trace button. So what? Uh, yeah, let's step back here. So I'm seeing the line, so there's my first equation, but I'm only seeing one exponential graph, and you can see that as it graphs. And notice, so I'm, remember how I told you those are, the, those are the same equivalent functions, they're just using different bases, and that's what I'm seeing here. And we're going to see some more with that again. So now they're asking me to predict, use these two models to predict for when x equals 8. So as I did earlier, I could just on paper, I could substitute in 8 for x, multiply by 0.75, add 3, 
And even for the E, I could multiply 8 times that decimal, then raise E to that power, and then times it by 3. Or I could take my base, raise it to the 8th power, and times it by 3. And that's where I'd get my answers. And I could certainly do that by hand. It's really slick, and part of this is to teach you how to use these calculators. Um, so what I did is I, I grabbed... I, I, I on my graph window here, I hit the trace button. It, I think it came up with four, six. And uh, I typed in eight because that's what I want to predict. And then I hit enter. And this is what came up. And that kind of checks if you think about if I substitute in uh, eight here, I get six plus plus three is nine. And that checks. And you notice how this says Y1. So it's using x equals y1 x equals y1 to do this prediction now if i just hit the down arrow i don't know if i have a picture for that it's down it's down below the down arrow when i'm talking about down below uh, oh yeah it's on the screen i can find it here uh, let me come back and move these out of that that down arrow is what i'm talking about if you press once you're on y1 if you want to see the next equation hit y, hit the down arrow and that'll kick you to y2 if you hit the up arrow it'll take you to y3 or whatever the last equation you have graphed okay so for y2 it predicted a little bit higher than what the linear did and we would expect that because the exponential is growing faster than the linear um so uh, let's see what am I saying? How was the thing? Oh, so here's that value. So it's a little more than three above the linear, and then I hit the down arrow again, and notice that's I'm on y3 now. Same equation. Notice how we're seeing just about the same same values. A little bit a little bit different, but I have to go out to the what the third decimal place to be different, and that's only there. I mean, do some rounding. That's only a difference of one one thousandth. So they're very close, and it's because of rounding. If I didn't round in this value, I would have, actually, if I didn't round in either of these, I would get a closer, I would get probably the same answer. Okay, so that's doing the linear model, creating an exponential model, and then using it to predict. So let's go do this for the next question. So if you want, try this by yourself, then come back and watch this video. Or if you really are lost and confused, you can just start watching now and just copy down what I'm writing. Um, so I've got two points. I've got 0, 12, because they're telling me the y-intercept is 12. And I've got another point, 3, 5. So if I want to find the line, I've got to find the slope. So 5 minus 12 over 3 minus 0. Would it be wrong if I had done 12 minus 5 and 0 minus 3, switch the x1, y1, and x2, y2? I'm hoping you're telling me no, and that's right, it doesn't matter as long as you don't switch. If you had done this, right, if I had done, if I had done 5 minus 12 over 0 minus 3, I'm mixing up, I'm mixing my x's and y's up, and that's going to give me the wrong slope. That'll give me, actually give me the sign change. And of course, don't put the X's on top of the Y's, right? Some of you are still doing that. Um, so let's get rid of that. And I'm going to get rid of that just because I don't want to have too much. It won't let me. Okay, so. So this slope is what? Negative 7 over 3. And then we know the Y intercept is 12. So because it's that's 0, 12. So Y equals negative 7 thirds x plus 12 and then if we're going to find that exponential model and let's use the e let's use that e constant so i know that 12 is my initial value so e to the a x is what he uses so we're going to say when y equals 5 uh, x equals 3 so what i can do is divide both sides by 12 so 5 over 12 equals e to the 3a. And then I can rewrite this. And, of course, really I'm rewriting this with ln, right? So the natural log of 5 over 12 equals the exponent. Right? So remember, it's log 
it's log base e, so log base e of the answer equals the exponent. So the natural log of 12 divided by 3 will be my a. So my calculator is telling me the natural log of 5 twelfths is negative 0 0.875 uh, five if I round equals 3a so then I divide that by 3 so that's giving me an equation of y equals 12 times e to the negative 0.2918x so there's my two equations and then if I check this on my calculator or substitute in 12 for each of these. So I graphed the two uh, functions on the calculator and I evaluated it both at x equals 12 and for the linear I'm getting negative 16 and for the exponential I'm getting about 0.362. Two, di two very different models so it's important to know which one you want, which one's appropriate. But. Okay, so that's that. Why don't you go ahead and do the work on the rest of that packet.